Welcome to another video. This video is a special one because firstly, it is um, not my usual type of video, but it's a very interesting problem. It's an algebra problem, which you should be able to do if you know what to do. So you don't have to be a calculus student or do advanced math. You just have to think because it's a mathematics Olympiad uh, problem. It's actually from the USA Mathematics Olympiad. And it's not impossible, but it's impossible if you don't know what to do. And I'm doing this in collaboration with my dear friend, Dr. PK Math. You need to check out his channel. If you are into problems like this for math competitions, for mathematics Olympiads, he, he's a pro at that. As you, if you've been on this channel for a while, you know that this is not the kind of math that I would normally pick, but I think I'm getting interested in them and I might do more of these, but please check out his channel and you'll be glad you did. Let me know what you see when you go check it out. Okay, let's solve this problem. I suspect that for you to be able to write an irrational expression as the sum of other irrational expressions, we have to introduce some algebra. And because this is a cube root expression, I would need to do some cubic expansion. So firstly, let's get some X and Y into the picture because that's the only way we can work ourselves out of this trouble. So I'm going to say that let Y be equal to this whole thing I have on the left, which is the cube root of the cube root of two minus one. Okay, so this is what I'm gonna be working with. This is what I need to get at the end of the day. I just need something that looks like this, so I don't need to work on this. I need to rewrite this so it looks like this. Okay. Um, well, let's get rid of the cube root expression, which means I'm gonna cube both sides. If I cube both sides, I'm going to have y cubed will be equal to the cube root of two minus one. So, what else can I do? Um, I can, ah, that's tough. Okay, so, there's another cube root here and I can't do anything with a cube root. So let me replace this again. So let me say, let X be equal to the cube root of two. So what do I have? It means I have, this implies that X cubed, if I cube both sides will be equal to two. Okay, so there are two important things I have established now. Oh, I can rewrite this. Since I have replaced this with x, I can say, therefore, y cubed is equal to x minus one. And I know that x cubed is equal to two. See, these are the two things that I'm gonna need to transform this expression. Remember, ignore the right hand side. Let's focus on this. Now let's do some manipulations. I wanna do something like this. X cubed plus one. What would X cubed plus one be if I do the cubic expansion? Well, factoring, if I factor this, um, this is something you have to know. Um, X cubed plus one can be factored into X plus one times X squared minus X plus one. This is the factoring of this. And the brother of this is when you have x minus one. Let me write it up here. Also, we know that x cubed minus one can be factored as x minus one. Then you have x cubed, sorry, you have x squared plus x plus one. Okay, we need these two factorings because they're gonna be relevant to we being able to break this down into things you're gonna add up. You're beginning to see that it's possible to add up something like this, right? Okay, so let's go here. We can generate two things from here. See what I'm gonna get. X cubed plus one 
So if I add 1 to this, I'm going to add 1 to this, it's going to be equal to 3. Nice. And if I do the subtraction, also, x cubed, if I subtract 1 from here, I'm going to subtract 1 from here, I'm going to get 1. So I have these. They are going to transform what I'm about to do now. Okay, now, this is the reason why for you to get good at things like this, you have to do them over and over and over again, and then you can easily see what tricks you need to apply if you're going for math competitions. Okay, so here we go. This is what I've got, and I need to use these. So let's go to the first one. x cubed plus 1 is equal to 3. Mm. x cubed plus 1 equals 3. It means I can write this equal to 3. So I can say that x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1 is equal to 3. Which means I can isolate my x plus 1 to be equal to 3 divided by x squared minus x plus 1. We're going to get there soon. It's looking juicy already. Now, let's go back to this one. What can we do with this one? We know that x minus 1, this option here, will be equal to 1. So let's do the same thing. We can have x minus 1 times x squared plus x plus 1 is equal to, which means we can write x minus 1 is equal to 1 over x squared plus x plus 1. Okay, so where does this lead me? It leads me to the point where if I go back to the beginning, remember what I'm looking for is y cubed. Because if I can get an expression for y cubed, I just take the cube root of both sides and I get my y. Remember, this is my y. Okay, so let's go here. What do we see here? y cubed is x minus 1. So this is my y cubed. Do you see that? So I can say that y cubed equals 1 over x squared plus x plus 1. If only I can rewrite this in a nice way, then I will get my y. And once you get your y, it's going to be easy. And look, I'm beginning to see the three terms that I need. Maybe if I can flip this, but what can I do to flip this? What can we do to this? This doesn't look good, doesn't look promising, okay? What is x? Well, here we have, we have replaced x minus one, so we will never use x minus one again. What about x plus one? This is x plus one. What is x plus one in everything we've done? Is there a way we can get x plus one? No. So you see, x minus one worked, but there is no x plus 1 for us. So it means there has to be a way to replace this x plus 1. And the easiest way is to come here and make something up here. And this is where this becomes very interesting. So I'm going to do some work on this side, and I'll come back here and replace this expression here. So let's see. Look, x squared plus x plus 1 we can rewrite as, if I multiply it by 3, and also divide it by 3. I have not changed anything. It's like multiplying it by 1. But see what comes out of this. This is going to be 3x squared plus 3x plus 3. And everything is divided by 3. I'm going to put that 1 over 3 here. I have not changed anything, but I have changed something because this 3 that is sitting here 
I can make x plus 1 out of it. How do I know that? Because if I go back to this, remember I told you this was going to work for us? I'm going to replace this 3 with x cubed plus 1 and see what this becomes. This becomes 1 third of 3x squared plus 3x plus, instead of writing 3, I'm going to write x cubed plus 1. Okay, what does that do for me? Well, look, there, look very well here. What I've got here is one third of x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1. Have you ever seen this expression before? Yes, I have seen it before. It is called x plus 1 cubed. This is one third of x plus 1 cubed. That long thing has become a short thing. I told you there is a way to rewrite this expression. So, this, this thing here in the denominator is this thing here. Which means I can come here and say that y cubed is equal to 1 over, this now is going to be x plus 1 cubed divided by 3, but instead of writing the 3 here, I'm going to now put it on top because it will flip the fraction. That's what you have. So we have been able to find an expression in terms of x that is not this wicked thing that we had from the beginning. What it is now is something beautiful. Now if I take the cube root of both sides, if I take the cube root of 3, I'm going to get the cube root of 3, and under it, I'm going to get the cube root of x plus 1 cubed, which is just x plus 1. Okay, how does that solve my problem? Because what I'm looking for is something that is this plus this plus this. But what I have is just, this is even worse than what I was thinking. No. Let me get rid of this, and then I'm going to show you the end of this. Remember what I said? that we didn't have x plus 1 in every manipulation we did at the beginning. We had x minus 1, but we didn't have x plus 1. So we needed to replace this x plus 1. So this x plus 1 that we have seen here, we're going to go here and replace it with this expression. Remember? So now our y is going to be equal to this divided by x plus 1, but this is the x plus 1 we will now be using, this guy here. So let's see. This is going to be equal to 3 root 3 divided by x plus 1, but our x plus 1 is now 3 over x squared minus x plus 1. And remember, when you have a fraction in the denominator, you flip it. When we flip this, see what we get. On top, we're going to have, this stays, it's going to be 3 root 3 multiplied by x squared minus x plus 1 divided by 3. Let me just put the 3 here. That's our y. This is the answer you've been looking for. We have been able to write y as the sum of three terms. That's it. What did we say x was again from the beginning? Ta-da-da! Cube root of 2. So watch what's going to happen. Let's just write everything out. So this is now equal to the cube root of 3. In fact, I'm going to write 3 as the cube root of 27, so we're safe, okay? Um, we're going to write it as the cube root of 27. Or, I can as well just write what I have here as the cube root of 3 over 27, which is the cube root of... Um, what's 3 over 27? 1 over 9. Wow, my math is terrible. Cube root of 1 over 9. So let's replace this with cube root of 1 over 9. Okay. And we're going to be multiplying each of the terms. What is x squared? Let's go back here. What is the square of the cube root of 2? Well, you just square the inside. That's the cube root of 4. So we're going to be, this is cube root of 4 
This is the cube root of 2. Cube root. Come on. Cube root of 4. Cube root of 2. And this is just 1. So, our y is going to be cube root of, well, you multiply 4 by 9. It's going to be the cube root of 4 over 9 minus the cube root of, if you multiply this by this, it's going to be 2 over 9, and this is just plus the cube root of 1 over 9. So, but it's supposed to be plus plus, so we can move this minus inside because it's cube root. So instead of writing this, I'm going to write plus here and move the minus inside. So it becomes minus 2. We have answered the question. Therefore, A b c is equal to 4 over 9 negative 2 over 9 1 over 9 those are what we've been searching for don't forget to check out pk dr pk math youtube channel he was the one that brought me into this and i'm loving it it's beautiful i'll see you in the next video Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.